Welcome to this Tech Tips video from Learn the Electrics. Calculating cable resistances is an essential part of the electrician's job, whether you are designing large factories or just adding a circuit to a domestic property. But how do we work the calculations backwards? If we know the resistances, how do we calculate the lengths? First, we need to know the main factors that affect a conductor's resistance. We are dealing only with copper cables here and we are assuming room temperature for our calculations. This drawing shows what effect changing the size or cross-sectional area of a conductor will have on the resistance and also what happens if you change the length of the cables. Making the size or CSA bigger will reduce the resistance since there is a bigger area of copper for the electrons to travel through. The opposite is to make the conductor smaller, reduce the CSA. Now the copper pathway is narrower and it is more difficult for electrons to pass. This will increase the resistance. For the length of the cables, we can make them shorter. Because the electrons do not have to travel as far, the resistance decreases. But if we make the pathway longer, increase the length, the electrons have further to travel and the resistance will increase. We can show this by using one millimeter conductor as an example. Start with the middle piece of cable. A 50 meter length of one millimeter copper has a resistance of 0 0.9 ohms and we will show you the table for this shortly. If we halve the length to 25 meters, the resistance will halve as well to 0 0.45 ohms. And if we double the length from 50 meters to 100 meters, then the resistance will double to 1.8 ohms. What about size? The CSA or cross-sectional area. This time we will keep the length fixed at 50 meters, but change the size of the copper conductor. As we saw above, a 50 meter length of one millimeter copper will return a resistance of 0 0.9 ohms. If we used a 2.5 mm cable, it is a bigger CSA and so the resistance should decrease. It is easier for electrons to move through the wire and here it has fallen to 0 0.37 ohms. And the same length of 4 mm cable will give a resistance of just 0 0.23 ohms, smaller still. It is important that you understand this concept. What happens to resistance when cable lengths or cable sizes change? Often we will want to know the R1 plus R2 resistance of a cable and we can do this by linking the phase and CPC together at one end of the circuit. Many electricians still refer to the CPC or circuit protective conductor as the earth conductor. So. With the phase and CPC connected together, we can test with our meter and send a test voltage along the CPC through the link at the far end and back along the phase wire. We have just tested 50 meters of 1 millimeter copper connected to 50 meters of 2.5 millimeter copper, and the numbers for each are shown here. 0 0.61 ohms plus 0 0.37 ohms will give us a combined resistance of 0 0.98 ohms for this cable. Notice that the thinner 1.5 cable has a greater resistance than the thicker 2.5 phase cable. Where do these numbers come from? The numbers we are using today are from Guidance Note 3 or GN3. This is an industry recognised publication on inspection and testing. And Table B1 shown here, lists various combinations of standard conductor sizes. We've reproduced part of table B1 here to make it easier to read. Starting at the top, if we had a single cable of size 1mm, the table tells us that its resistance would be 18.1 milliohms per metre length. So 2 metres length would be 36.2 milliohms and 10 metres will be 10 times 18.1 or 181 milliohms. Now look at the bottom row 
for 2.5 phase or line cable with a 1.5 millimeter CPC or earth. This is 19.51 milliohms per meter, all the way along one conductor and all the way along the other. Let's calculate some resistances using the tables. To do this, we must know the cable size and the cable length. We can begin with a single cable. In this example, the cable is 100 meters long and is of 2.5 millimeter copper. There's no CPC, just the single cable that we will measure from end to end. Table B1 tells us that a 2.5 millimeter conductor on its own measures 7.41 milliohms per meter. So 7.41 multiplied by 100 gives 741 milliohms. Because this is calculated in milliohms, thousandths of an ohm, we must divide our calculated answer by 1000 to get back to ordinary ohms. So 741 milliohms divided by a thousand gives us an answer of 0 0.741 ohms. That is our resistance. If we were to measure it, that is the answer that we would hope to get. Let us calculate a radial circuit now. This will give us the R1 plus R2 figure that we need for our test certificates. This time we have 100 meters of twin and earth cable. This is standard cable, so 2.5 phase and neutral will have a 1.5 millimeter earth conductor. Table B1 shows a 2.5 conductor paired with 1.5 CPC will give 19.51 milliohms of resistance for every meter of this twin and earth cable. When calculating, we're interested in one direction only, not there and back. The numbers in the tables have allowed for this there and back current flow. Now, 19.51 milliohms multiplied by 100 meters and divided by 1000 gives 1.95 ohms of resistance. Moving on to a ring circuit now, we will keep the same twin and earth cable, 2.5 phase with a 1.5 earth and the same length of 100 meters. But because it is a ring circuit, we will have this thing called a parallel paths, several pathways for the electrons to flow and this will reduce the resistance by a factor of four. It is the same calculation as the radial circuit except that we divide the answer by 4. Here we go then. 19.51 milliohms multiplied by 100 meters and divided by 1000 gives 1.95 ohms of resistance and then divide by 4 to give 0 0.49 ohms. This 0 0.49 ohms is the R1 plus R2 for a ring circuit. Hopefully you can see that resistance values in ring and radial circuits are not the same. Let us calculate cable lengths now from our knowledge of the cable size and the cable resistance. For a single cable, the length of the cable is 1000 multiplied by the measured resistance and then divided by the milliohms number in table B1. In this example, we have 1.5 millimeter copper and we measured 0 0.363 ohms with our test meter. 1000 multiplied by 0 0.363 and divided by 12.1 from table B1 will return an answer of 30 meters. So our single cable is 30 meters long. Let us now look at a radial circuit and suppose that this is a water heater circuit wired in 2.5, 1.5 twin and earth cable. We measure it and we find the resistance, the R1 plus R2, to be 0 0.78 ohms. So how long is the circuit? Again, table B1 is used to find that the cable is 19.51 milliohms per meter. The length then is 1000 multiplied by 0 0.78 and divided by 19.51. And our answer should be 40 meters of cable. Now for a ring circuit. This is pretty much the same as a radial circuit, but we must include the factor of four 
for the fact that it is a ring. Let us suppose this time that we have read the numbers on the test certificate and it has an R1 plus R2 of 0 0.317 ohms. How long is the circuit? 2.5 twin in earth, again with a 1.5 millimeter earth. This time we include the factor of 4 and begin with 4 times 1000. So 4000 multiplied by 0 0.317 and divided by 19.51 tells us that the length is 65 metres. An alternative method to calculate the length of a ring circuit is to test it as you would a radial circuit. And it is perfectly okay to do this provided it is done correctly. This will involve separating the two phase wires from each other and the two earth wires from each other. This can be done at the consumer unit or it can be done at one of the sockets. Remember that this is a dead test. The circuit will need to be safely isolated before doing this. With the four ends in front of you, connect any phase to any earth with a connector block, crocodile clips or wagos. Now, measure between the remaining two ends. Let's say we measure 1.268 ohms. This is not R1 plus R2 for the ring circuit. It is called little R1 plus little R2. This method does not use the factor 4 in the calculation. A thousand multiplied by 1.268 and divided by 19.51 equals 65 meters again. This shows that the calculation can work both ways for a ring circuit if they are done properly. In summary, we calculated the cable resistance for a known length of cable. And we calculated the length of a cable from a measured resistance. And we can do this for a single conductor, two conductors in a radial circuit, or two conductors in a ring circuit by using the correct version of the formula. And this slide shows the six variations of the same formula that we have just used. To use it, it is a single, radial or ring circuit on the left and then choose the correct column for resistance or length and apply that version of the formula. And why should we need to do these calculations? Is there an advantage? Well, yes there is. If we can calculate the resistance before we install the cables, we can determine the circuit ZS by adding together ZE and R1 plus R2. This will indicate to us if ZS will be satisfactory before we even lay a single cable. It will tell us, for the chosen circuit breaker, if ZS will be satisfactory and if the circuit will disconnect safely in the event of a fault. It answers the question, is the circuit satisfactory or should we redesign? Imagine installing a cable in a property only to find that ZS is too high and now we have to remove all that cable, go to the wholesalers and buy a new cable and reinstall that. You may even have to replaster walls, dismantle cupboards, lift loft insulation, etc. And if we know the maximum length that a circuit can be without exceeding the approved ZS values, we can plan and design a circuit correctly. Again, imagine installing a single circuit only to find that it is too long for the breaker size and cable size installed. If we knew this before we even laid the cables, we could explore the options of increasing the cable size or even running two separate circuits, each of which meets the required ZS values. And when inspecting properties, knowledge of the apparent length of a circuit is useful in identifying problems and tracing cable routes. These calculations are a way of forewarning yourself of potential problems and taking the right steps before you start spending time and money laying cables. And I hope you find them useful. Well, that's it. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable and that you have now added some powerful knowledge to your mental toolbox. By clicking on subscribe below, you will have access to all of our tech tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next weekly video. 
Clicking on subscribe also helps us and we do appreciate that small act. It does make us feel that our efforts are worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. And we also have tech tips articles on our website which can be found at www.learnelectrics.com Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.